So welcome to Amazing Food. Today we're with Johnny and Andy Laverty uh, and their business is the Wolf and Woodsman and they've got a third partner who unfortunately can't be here today, it's Dave Knowles. So lads, welcome to uh, the Innovation Factory. Thanks very much, thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah. You're very welcome well. and what I'd like to do is you tell me a bit about yourselves and your business. Sure. So over to you guys. Great. Uh, well Johnny and I are obviously brothers. Um, very obviously. Uh -huh. um, People, a lot of people say we're twins, we're actually triplets. There's a, a third one as well. Mm -hmm. we Seriously? Uh -huh. We also <laughs> have to add that. Um, she's a girl, Katie. Katie. Okay. So she doesn't like to be... No. Uh, I hope she doesn't look like you two. Left out. Thankfully not. <laughs> For her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we've always been a wee bit entrepreneurial, I guess, as mm -hmm. we've grown up. Um, come up with lots of wee schemes of making pocket money and things. Mm -hmm. um, and our, our mother has a, a business um, as well, so sort of in the blood um, a wee bit. Very good. What does she do? We, she owns a business in Market Hill um, called Alexander's, so it sells well, household goods and she has a restaurant and things as well. Very so nice. Well, it's sort of been in the blood a wee bit. Um, we've been very into our health and fitness our whole lives and we opened a gym together uh, alongside Dave Knowles as well. Um, it was about five years ago. Um, mm -hmm. So as that kind of established itself, um, started to run itself a wee bit, then the, the cogs started spinning again. We wanted to come up with another um, concept and we wanted a product that we could sell, something that was very scalable. Um, with the gym it's a wee bit different as you have a square footage that you have to fill once mm -hmm. it's full. You either you get a bigger premises or another premises. Yeah. With with the crisps, it's very scalable. It's something that you can grow um, from a small space. And we wanted a product mm -hmm. like that that we could develop. Um, it was sort of your idea, really, how you came up with it. Yeah, um, I suppose. I'll take the credit. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> basically, Dave and I were over at a, a fitness competition in Newcastle in England. And we'd, we'd sort of got to know a fella, his name was Sean, he owns a company called Icon Nutrition, um, over the phone, because you used to phone him up to place his orders. Okay. Your orders over the phone, but as he grew, um, he ended up just ordering online. But anyway, we went over, we met him at the show, uh, and when we met him, we realised he was similar to us, he was just a young fella. We were, I think we were 25 at the time when we met him. Um, so it kind of encouraged us a wee bit, and we started thinking, well, if he can do it, maybe we can do something in the food kind of sector. Okay. Um, and then we thought, what's up and coming at the minute? What's a wee bit niche? What's something a bit different? Um, and what's something that's pretty scalable? And we thought crisps, and we thought sweet potatoes pretty big now in the fitness industry and mm -hmm. grown, so let's try and make some sweet potato <coughs> crisps. Um, first thing we did was type it into YouTube, um, looked at some tutorial videos, started making them at home in the oven, um, made a hash of it like, <laughs> repeatedly, hundreds of batches. Very frustrating process. Um, but you'd maybe out of one batch you might get one crisp that was kind of half crispy and tasted okay. Okay. So that kind of kept you going to try another one and another one. Uh, until eventually maybe half the batch was coming out good, you know. Um, and then you'd make about six batches and pick out the good ones and put it in a bag and that was your bag of crisps. Um, so that was encouraging um, and we kept developing it um, from there really. Um, and who were your product tasters? Who, who was doing all the tasting for you? Mostly ourselves, you yourselves, friends and family. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the girls we, involved as well. You'd said there, you know, we originally baked the product, so okay. we wanted to bake it as it would be a, a bit healthier than a, a fried crisp. Mm -hmm. Came to the conclusion it just can't be done with sweet potato, um, just the way um, sweet potato is with the starch content and yeah. things. So we then moved to frying it, um, and we had a, on a couple of schemes. Um, one of the schemes, what was the name of it? Um, that was the innovation voucher. Uh, innovation voucher. Innovate yeah. us as well. Innovate us, yeah. So we ended that. up at the E3 campus. Um, we had a certain amount of hours there that we could develop the product with a professional chef. Mm -hmm. And we used that um, and came up with a final product that was consistent and we could produce in higher quantities. It took a very long time to get to that stage, mm -hmm. probably nearly two years. Um, and then getting the, all the, the nutritional values sorted out for the product as well, that took a long time. Um, pr probably nearly a year for that. So mm -hmm. from coming up with the idea, it was probably three years ago at least to where we are now, where we're, we've only really been out in the shops about six months or so. Brilliant. So a very long process, but hopefully all the hard parts done. We now have a final product that we can say here, here's our product, you know. Well, once I taste them after, I, I, I'll let you know. I can't wait. <laughs> no no so tell, in terms of now the health consciousness and, you know, obviously they're, they're now fried. Yeah. Was there a significant difference in terms of the baking and the frying? Yeah, well there was a bit. Um, the baking was less calories because you're not using oil or as yeah. much oil. Um, but we never really wanted to market it as a health product. Mm -hmm. um, although the, the baked ones would have been healthier, it was never our 
that wasn't your main focus to be a health product we just wanted to be a tasty crisp and yeah. they're a lot tastier when they're fried as we all know. <laughs> of course um it's kind of funny because everyone comes up to us and they say oh these are healthier than regular crisps and we just straight up tell people they're not actually they're prepared in the same way mm -hmm. um but it's people have this idea of sweet potato being healthier which it does have a lot of good qualities a lot of different vitamins um, than regular potatoes but we just tell people straight up it's not a health product i've actually had an argument with someone one day <laughs> and he was saying no no it's healthy though isn't it and I was, no it's it's not actually healthy you, you still know? say yeah no it is yeah, absolutely so good. It is. just go with it next time I just kind of go with it now you know um but uh, as, as you said earlier, um, sweet potatoes were, are very in vogue. Mm -hmm. I actually love sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is very difficult mm -hmm. to get them crispy in the oven. Yeah, I, yeah. I can attest Perfect. to that, absolutely. Yeah. 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 They either like the burn or they're soggy. You yeah. can never get the sweet spot. It's very you know? difficult. Yeah. Very, so very difficult. So a wee touch of oil on them sometimes helps. But yeah, yeah, you'll you know well. better than I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in terms of um, the business and the product mm -hmm. so you, what I, I originally thought to be fair it was going to be a healthier product yeah um if you're going to develop a range i'll talk about that later mm -hmm. will it be healthier or is it just about um tasty crisps or tasty products it's not um in terms of the snacks that we we want to develop a snack company so okay. we don't want to just have one type of crisp we want to you know go into a whole range of products mm -hmm. um and drinks and things maybe we'll touch on that um, later on as well and um, kind of new products that we're working on but in terms of snacks we things we wanted to cover was to be a, a higher end premium product that tasted really nice mm -hmm. and that was a wee bit different from the other products on offer. We didn't want to come into the market and, and be a health product and start competing with other you know health products. Yeah. A lot of those kind of healthier crisps that taste like cardboard <laughs> and you sort of just eat it because it hits your calorie target for the day. It's yeah. not that enjoyable. We didn't want to be that kind of um, product. So we want to be a kind of premium higher end product that will sell in local higher end bars and things for we can't compete with the likes of your tato and your walkers on price points yeah as they're producing such massive Obviously. quantities mm -hmm. economies so of we scale. Had to, mm -hmm. yeah. i must say i absolutely love the design who came up with the design thanks uh, it was a russian guy actually um it's brilliant yeah we used a website i'm sure you've heard of it 99 designs yes um, indeed so we <coughs> we kind of like the concept of that because you're getting you give your brief and then you're getting ideas from everyone rather than going to one person and getting what's in their head. Yeah. Um, so we had an idea for the brand. We wanted something kind of rugged um, that was quite visual. We love the outdoors and we love, we love the wolf as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, just um, on that, what, what, what is the wolf theme? What, what's... Yeah. Our, our gym is called White Wolf. Johnny's wearing a White Wolf t-shirt here. Um, so we, we like the idea of an animal um, and we wanted an animal for, well, for the gym anyway that was not too masculine and not too feminine. Mm -hmm. As well, wolves they kind of work in packs, so there's a whole kind of team ethos of it as well. Yeah, good. and they're quite sleek mm -hmm. creatures, you know. Um, so we kind of we also got stuck awesome with that theme with the wolf head. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's so something That's that was brilliant. you know maybe just recognizable as a logo rather than saying we are mm -hmm, such and such fitness or something. You know, we like to try and stand out a wee bit in terms of branding. Yeah, and that that's big. really different. That, that that's probably the nicest Chris packet I've ever seen. Thanks very much. Uh, very very much. Yeah, yeah. It's really really good. We want our, our branding to match the product, so we leave the skins on, and we're aiming for that kind of rugged, mm -hmm. kind of authentic yeah. feel. And we eventually we just want to build the brand around that whole kind of vibe, you know. I'm so salivating. Kind of I can't wait. <laughs> as well, I should have tasted them before. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> with the branding and. Uh, we wanted the whole thing to sort of tell a bit of a story as well so um we wanted to encourage people to if they have an idea to maybe follow that up um and give it a go and give it a try mm -hmm. and we think the whole outdoor kind of design kind of ties in with that as well and um, so we have a tagline is live explore thrive so it's all about if you have an idea go and see if you can do something about it um you know travel learn have fun, all those kind of things. Brilliant. So we wanted our, our brand to sort of encompass that as well. And how have you been getting your name out there so far? Mm. What have you been doing? Mostly um, social media probably. Um, we do a lot of vlogging and things. Um, we're absolutely rubbish at it, but <laughs> 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 we try our best anyway. Um, so we're trying to, we want to put ourselves out there, like as Johnny says, as just a bunch of normal guys who are following this kind of idea. And we're going to highlight the highs and the lows of our journey. Brilliant. So just being yourselves, which exactly, I think hopefully. I think yeah. works. Yeah. A lot of yeah. kind of bigger companies, they're kind of faceless, um, yeah. and we don't want to be that. Um, so we want to kind of use our mm -hmm. kind of small size to our advantage at the minute. Um, but do you want to go back? Sort of well, we, yeah, we like we'll, we'll put some dreams. Yeah, I guess yeah. like everyone who starts a business, you'd Absolutely. love to. Yeah, so think sure. local, act global. I think that's the term. Okay. 
Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So now I know you're at the uh, Balmoral show. Yeah. How did you find that? Do you think your your business has evolved as a result of it? Do you get talking to people? How did yeah, it go for you? Brilliant. Um, it was unreal. Yeah. Really, really good. So yeah, we, we actually got in. We were sponsored by Ulster Bank to attend. So we bank with them. Uh, and we're part of the Ulster Bank Accelerator. Yes, you're program. stealing my lines here for an Sorry. Internet. No, no, let's talk about that now. Go sure. ahead. Um, so through that program, um, they asked a few businesses to come on board for the full four days. Okay. Um, so they got us in for free, which was brilliant. I think it, you know, it could be quite expensive. Maybe yeah. Otherwise. That's super. Um, so we were straight in there, obviously, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, they also used us as part of their advertising campaign, um, sort of nationwide. Brilliant. So we were getting these random texts from people saying, "Oh, I just saw you on a billboard." Up I don't know, Lauren or wherever. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it's 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 so it, was quite, it was really strange for us because we are so, so small scale, you know, but it was cool to, for that to happen and people yeah. really noticing you out and about. Mm -hmm. um, so no, so, it went brilliantly for us. Yeah. Has that program been good for your business? That's, that's one of the questions I was going to ask you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Really yeah. good. Um, I think the biggest thing for us was the doors that it, it opened. Mm -hmm. So it, um, going in and looking for a contact somewhere, it can be quite difficult if nobody knows you and you're Absolutely. randomly cold calling or emailing people. But when you're in a scheme like that, they have the reputation for you almost. So they're going to be able to get a contact for you who's going to maybe listen or sit down and have a coffee with you at least. Mm -hmm. So but definitely making contacts, opening doors was the biggest thing yeah. that that offered us for sure. Brilliant. When, and what about the feedback at the Balmoral show about the crisps? The feedback was brilliant. Um, I think we sold, what, six, seven hundred bags, something like that. Yeah. Very good. Um, which was great, but as you say, it was more about the positive feedback we were getting and the contacts we were making mm -hmm. uh, and getting the name out there. It was also awesome. A few people came up and said, oh, I tried these a few months ago and I was looking for you. Ah. Um, with one wee kid who came running up and was like, yes, I finally found you. <laughs> and that was like good. the highlight of the week. Yeah. Us, you know? yeah. So On the other side of that, you get the odd sort of older granny coming up, trying it and going, sauce, no tato. <laughs> <laughs> Walking away. So, it's probably uh, a generational but, thing too. Yeah, I think it, it is. Yeah, I think because they is. are quite different the sweet potato yeah, they're, they're rustic some people aren't expecting it they're expecting a normal crisp yeah, yeah the, the yeah. flavor profile is definitely mm -hmm. a wee bit different than what you're used to mm -hmm. so not for every part much nicer that. i'd say boys. much nicer we would agree as well. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so what do you think about the, the food industry in ireland is it evolving has it changed even in your short time and in, in your business yeah. How have you found it um well as was kind of touched on at the start we don't really have any experience in the food industry mm -hmm. um but from getting involved in it um, and going to a few networking groups and part of the accelerator program and whatnot, it seems like it's something that's really developing and growing. Um, I know that Northern Ireland won the best food destination. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was last year, twenty eighteen, which is amazing. When I heard that, I was like, "Wow, best food destination in the world!" You know, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but the more you kind of talk to people and the more you're in that kind of sector, you realise how many actually quite big food companies there are in Northern Ireland. Absolutely. Um, it seems like a really sort of exciting space to be in at the yeah. minute. Um, we were saying um, as well that um, a bar we stock in Moira, the still house, um, so they actually make vodka and we, we took over their vodka factory in Lisburn as they moved their premises to Moira. But, uh, they're Ruby, getting bigger too, were they? They're growing mm -hmm. as well, so Ruby go. Blue Vodka and they actually got voted the best vodka in the world there, one of their, their vodkas. Unbelievable. Um, so hearing that from a kind of someone from such a small town as Moira is getting the best vodka in the world. and Giving you two lads a and day of hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that could be us it's, next. Yeah, it's really inspiring no, that they, they can do that, you know, yeah. from such a small country, and mm -hmm. um, so it definitely seems like a really exciting space to be a part. And of. tell me, in terms of like provenance and you know, buying local, is that important to your business? Mm -hmm. I mean, wh where do you source your sweet potatoes from, for example? Um, our sweet potatoes have to come from Carolina, actually, in the states. Okay. Um, so sweet potato is quite difficult to grow in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's about six months of frost-free weather conditions you need okay. to grow them. And um, there are some places who can grow them. In Northern Ireland and Scotland, um, but if you want to buy them to make crisps, as in you need a lot of them, you're going to be paying a lot more money than you would yeah. even to import them from Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, so ours all come from the States, yeah. We'd love to buy them locally if... Yeah, if it was possible. Obviously it's not possible. Not possible. That's, that's, so that's we just know, try to buy local anywhere we can. So yeah. the likes of our seasoning and things, that's mm -hmm. all locally produced. Brilliant. Um, we do think that's really important mm -hmm. um, to support local. Um, yeah, and especially, also, you know, if you're probably going into local bars, etc. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody mm -hmm. looking after each other, I think it's really important, exactly, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what sort of, you know, experiences? You, you talked earlier about ups and downs, so, so tell us about the ups and the downs. Uh, we've had plenty. <laughs> anyway, probably more downs than ups, but when you do get an up, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, one example I can think of is the, the packaging we ordered. Mm -hmm. 
So there's obviously minimum order quantities for all yeah. these things, and for that our packaging it was thirty two thousand bags. Um, a lot of packaging. Yeah. So we, you know, got the design finalized, put the order in, paid for it. Packages arrived. Looked at the back and realized that we'd uh, put the ingredients on incorrectly. So we had thirty two thousand bags, all with incorrect ingredients. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I, I think I blanked it out of my memory that particular moment, but maybe yeah. it was you who broke the news or yeah. something. Oh. But I think yeah, but it was a, a really horrible feeling, you know, your gut sinks. And you, you just you can't sell a bag with incorrect ingredients. Nope. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. So you have to kinda wipe that off. As Learning well. curve boys. Yeah, la laugh or cry moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you're still here, so yeah. Still Obviously, it, ha it hasn't kept you down anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in terms of um, support, you know, you talked about the Ulster Bank Accelerator Program. Yeah. Any other support from from you know local businesses? You talk about Innovate Us. Tell us who's helped you along the way. Yeah, so um, we're part of the Lisburn Enterprise Centre, um, okay. and the folks in there. There's a lot of programs. So you've got like a My Advisor program, and um, where you'll have it like a mentor, and you'll meet up regularly, and um, they'll help you out with basically any questions you have and getting your contacts and any other schemes that are coming up and um, within right. the council. They'll keep you in the loop? Yeah, they, they put us in touch with various events, um, even the like of, uh, we were at Hillsborough Christmas Market, um, it was then we got us in touch with the company who ran that. Very good. That was a really successful. So again, opening well. doors, yeah. Yeah, which is yeah. brilliant, especially for a young business, you, you, you need yeah. you need someone to give you a helping hand, uh, no, no question about as it. As well, they're mm -hmm. always doing sort of, we kind of seminars as well within mm -hmm. that, um, on like the logistics of running a business, which is really mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. So social media, but even down to like doing your taxes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, the stuff that you won't really be familiar with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's been invaluable for all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and has has mum helped out? Um, she's Is always that, there to, yeah. to pick her brain. She knows she's Maybe been in more business like emotionally at this point. Yeah, <laughs> support. She's been yeah. in business uh, all of her life. Yeah. Brilliant. So she's always there to answer any yeah. questions we have about logistically as well yeah. mm -hmm. running a business. You know, Which is great. It. It's uh -huh. actually it's a really good to have that in the background, isn't it? Yeah, Definitely. it's good to have someone there who's like eternally positive. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I don't know whether it's like a mum thing or, but she just she believes in us a lot. Um, Brilliant. Love it. One hundred percent. So she's like. You know, just keep going. You're not gonna really? fail. So, whether it's because she's her mom or it's because she really likes the product, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably a bit of both. Bit of both. Uh, probably. Bit of both. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's fantastic. And tell me, so where currently can we get the Wolf and Woodsman products? So we're aiming for sort of higher end bars and cafes and things. A lot of independently owned kind of artisan places at the minute. Our biggest customer is actually the cloth ear, just by the merchant. Yeah. So they're selling um, a couple of boxes a week. So they're they're selling about two hundred and fifty to three hundred bags a month at right. the minute. Mm -hmm. Um, the flavor, one of our flavors, the peri peri salted flavor, we sort of targeted at people who are having a pint. So you know, when you have a couple of pints of beer absolutely. and you like that kind of salt and savory. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it seems to go down really well. With and that. they'll be happy because you drink more beer as well. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. When when situation. So what what's the range of flavors now? We've, we've currently have two flavours, um, we've uh, Peri Peri Salt mm -hmm. and this new flavour, Chipotle and Lime. Mm -hmm. So they're both, they're a wee bit different. The salt one, as I say, is targeted. If you're having a pint, it's great, kind of complements it. Chipotle and Lime, it's a kind of heavier seasoned kind of flavour. It's a bit of Mexican spice with a wee bit of lime through it. Nice. Um, so they are quite different flavours. Mm -hmm. um, That's maybe in front of the TV watching a film or something, yeah. dipping it in the something. Chipotle is the kind of flavour you'll sit down and eat a whole bowl. You know, oh, yeah, or can't stop eating it. Kinda, yeah. people over, no, maybe not you two. <laughs> yeah, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> I've never eaten as many crisps in my life. And tell me, so what, what's the future? Where do you hope to be? Where are we going to go with this? Um, kind of one, one day at a time. Um, at the minute, we're trying to scale up our production. Um, it's kind of semi automatic at the minute, so we'd like to get that up to being obviously fully automatic if we can. And do the three of you, you guys work on it currently? Have you got other employees as well? Three of us do it all. Brilliant. Yeah, three of us. Cook, yeah. pack, mm -hmm. prep, sell, deliver, yeah. everything. Busy boys. So we're busy. And as ways. well as doing the, the gym too. Well, yeah. the gym. Yeah. We've, we've plenty of coaches in the gym that can help us out okay. as well. So we, thankfully, it's at a stage where it's easy, it's ticking over. Yeah, it's from the And we have the freedom to explore this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it sort of touched earlier. We want to develop a snack company, not just a crisp yeah, not company. just crisps. So we have other kind of products that we're working on. Um, you would mentioned the innovation voucher, how mm -hmm. we used that at the start to develop our, our sweet potato crisp. Um, we're getting involved with it again to develop a new drink product. Um, I'll maybe not say too much about it, but it is, it's a, a health product and it is something totally different to what you would think. So it's not just a drink that is good for you. Um, that's maybe sounds a wee bit 
ambiguous. It has a yeah. twist. Yeah. A bit of a twist to it, okay. yeah, I'll not give away too much. Good. Yeah. And what other sort of snack products, what else are we looking at? Um, at the minute, it's different flavours of crisps, really. Um, yeah. We'll probably branch out into normal crisps at some mm -hmm. stage as well. Mm -hmm. um, but at the minute, our niche is sweet potato, definitely. Yeah. And we've spent so long developing the recipe to cook a sweet potato, and we're quite proud of it. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to stick with that for now and develop a range of flavours. So this is a secret re recipe, like KFC, is it? It's pretty much. It's, it's, very yeah, good. Yeah, it's locked in a safe somewhere. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Very good. It's just a lot of trial and error. As I said, you need quite a specific way to cook a sweet potato crisp. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you have come out now mastered that? We're quite yeah. confident that nobody could copy how we cook a sweet potato crisp. Yeah. Oh, that could be a patent so, there. I like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and tell me, so in terms of the bars, so do you hope to go into retail or is it just going to be bars? Is it like an adult type crisp? Yeah, well. I suppose it is more so targeted at that. Um, at the minute, we are open to regular retailers as well, um, but we think we think we're, we'll probably sell a lot more in bars, um, just with the brand and, and the higher price point we're going for. Yeah, I think yeah. If if our bag of crisps, if it's sitting in the likes of your local spa or beside a bag of Tito or Walkers, yeah. um, they can afford to reduce their margins so yeah. much and price us out. Mm -hmm. So. But yours always isn't minute. about price. It's, it's about mm. nearly individuality and yeah, exactly. different, more than, like an experience. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely yeah. brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we can go bars and maybe eventually, you know, mm -hmm. you'll you'll you become mainstream in terms of retail. But that mm -hmm. that's not really your focus. Not not now. I mean, Johnny said we're sort of looking at um, up on our capacity in the factory. Mm -hmm. So when we can produce at higher volumes, we can then maybe look at some of the multinationals and get yeah. in. We can afford to kind of reduce your margins a wee bit. Mm. With that, but definitely at the minute we're kind of going direct um, to the retailers, mm -hmm. um, Brilliant. which is and working for us. Geographically, are you just selling the north? You hope to go through Ireland or Britain or Europe? Or yeah, we do. We, we'd love to um, start exporting um, down to Ireland. Um, so, and there's various schemes that you can get involved with. Yeah. Um, for that, so. Invest in the back all of you boys. Yeah, yeah. Invest in anyone's I. watching or listening. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, Brilliant. Shout, yeah. So we are in a, a scheme at the minute, just the very early stages, mm -hmm. looking at exporting um, down south. Um, so it's, it's exciting, yeah. definitely. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Just, yeah. Yeah. Magic. And in terms of where people can find you, so have you got a website, have you got Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, Give so us a we, plug. We have a, a website, it's just wolfandwoodsman.com. Okay. Um, our Facebook is wolfandwoodsman. And our Instagram account is Wolf and Woodsman with a wee underscore at the end. Brilliant. So all of this will be available underneath in the links, okay? Mm -hmm. And one last question then. So when you're rich and famous, um, <laughs> will you remember us here at Amazing Food and Drink? Definitely Absolutely. Will. Yes. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> and and anything great. else? Um, anything else you want to talk about just before we finish? Any other? Um, do you want to give a final plug to anything? Or? Yeah, well, I suppose if there's any, we mentioned about those yeah. kind of higher end bars that we're mm -hmm. looking at. Um, so anywhere like that, anyone who's watching and maybe thinks, oh, that product might look good behind my bar, mm -hmm. um, please do give us a shout and we'll have a chat. Um, yeah, Brilliant. We're happy to get you know sample bags out to anyone who wants to try them. You know. Okay, no so you've heard it. The guys are going to give you samples. Yeah. I'd love you to get in contact. So thanks very much for, for watching. And it's been thoroughly enjoyable talking to uh, Johnny and Andy. Mm -hmm. And good luck to Dave as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks very I much, guys. Thanks very Cheers. much. Yeah.